Khobus is the oldest and most sacred instrument of the Kazakhs that has survived to the present day. A priceless gem of Kazakh culture dating back to the 8th century, Khurqat Ata, a Turkic composer, philosopher and poet, is believed to have invented Khobus, according to folklore and the works of Central Asian scholars. Khurqat and Khobus are both related concepts for Kazakhs. Korkut invented Kobus. He was a storyteller who lived on the Serdiyara coast in the August Kipchak tribes and sang about his people's heroic deeds. He was a thinker, sage and soothsayer, a well-known personality in Turkic history who occupies a unique place in Turkic culture. The origins of Kobus can be traced back to a prophetic dream that Korkut once had. He learned how to make the instrument from it. This is how Kobus appeared. The Kazakh people hold Khurqat in high regard. His life is the subject of several myths and stories in Kazakh mythology. According to one of the tales, the birth of Khurqat was prophesied by a three-day-long storm, thunderstorm and showers. The sky was densely packed with dark clouds. After nine days of severe contractions, the mother gave birth to a child. People were convinced that the infant was the cause of an uncommon natural phenomena. People thought the infant scared them, so they named Khurqat from the verb Khurqatu, which translates as to scare. Oh my Khobas, your melody keeps me from sadness. You sing about the passing of time because it has been given to you to expose the truth that has lain dormant in our souls. Khurqat makes it obvious in these lines that the instrument was his beloved companion that inspired and strengthened the poet. According to folklore, as soon as Khurqat touched the Khobas strings, the birds fell silent, the animals froze, and all living creatures listened to the magical sounds that formed a mesmerizing tune. As a result, Khobas is revered as a sacred instrument. It was not for everyone. Only those with a special talent could pick up Khobas and derive wonderful sounds from it. Baksa Osu Seir played the instrument for two centuries. Nobody dared to touch it. They claim that if you desecrate the sacred kubus, with unsuitable care, punishment will come. Of course, this was a delusion. As a result, for two centuries, this instrument was not played, used or remembered. The structure of the kubus correlates to an ancient Kazakh idea about the world's structure, which states that it is divided into three parts, upper, middle and lower down. As a result, Khobas is known as the instrument of Baksa, Kazakh shamans. It was thought that because of the Khobas, the Baksa could freely go from one world to another, bargain with spirits to save the patient and seek help from Tengri. Shokan Walikhanov, a well-known Kazakh scientist and educator, talked about this in his publications. Doctor of Art History, Professor Sara Kuzenbay wrote about the function of Kobus in the lives of Baksa and Zhrao, saying that Baksa 
owned the art of storytelling and when treating a patient, they had a significant influence on him with the help of the word and beautiful sound of Kobus. Even now, listening to Kobus might induce a peculiar state of mind. You are captivated by the sound. Kobus deserves to be heard for a long time. Only then you will be able to sense how your energy has been cleansed. It is currently being updated because each cue provides information that the listener takes in. It starts to grasp this information and it's through such perception that a person's energy gets renewed. There is some activity movement inside beginning with the brain and spreading through the body. As a result, it must be stated that Kobus's healing ability has not vanished, it's always with it. It moves from one century to the next. Even in ancient times, mankind attempted to eradicate the shamans. They did not, however, vanish. Shamans are a natural element of the environment. Even if not a single shaman remains, another one comes and makes its own kobus. Their existence is as natural as any other natural occurrence. For example, mowing the grass causes new grass to grow, doesn't it? The kobus played by the shaman were not the same as those played by modern performers. Mirrors and various rattles were connected to the inside of the casing of the instrument, which provided additional sounds. According to the legend, it was these sounds that enabled the baksa to summon genies, his personal assistants. To be honest, this is not a show for the weak of heart. Baksa, for his part, defended his activities by saying that this is how he expels sins and evil spirits. Kobus appears to be a basic instrument at first view. The Kazakhs, however, devoted close attention not only to its tone but also to its structure and appearance. Traditional Kobus production necessitates great quality and adherence to stringent guidelines. It's made of tamarisk, maple, birch, or oak. The strings are made of strong hair from a horse's ponytail or mane, which is why the traditional Kobus is called. The sound is extracted using a bow composed of horse hair as well. It's horse's hair, as you can see. Horse hair was once used to make strings. The skin of a camel or another domestic animal is used to cover the body of the instrument, mostly camel, cow, and goat skin. There is a break here, as you can see. The name Khobus is pronounced similarly to the word Kyus, which means cavity, deepening. A single piece of wood was used to carve the instrument's body. So far, this technique has not changed. It is still in use today. This instrument is still made from a single piece of wood, it has the shape of a swan. Horse hair is also used to make the bow. Tiek is inserted beneath the strings. Here is a small one and here is a large one. This is the body including the neck, head and ears. The strings are tuned to a fourth or a fifth when performing cues. At first glance, the instrument appears simple, but it accurately reproduces natural sounds. People are amazed by Qobuz's eye-catching feature. By the way, some academics believe that Qobuz is the origin of stringed musical instruments in Western Europe. <laughs> Such an assumption has been made by scientists. European experts in particular claim that our boat instruments are the predecessors, prototypes of the violin. There is one such theory. These instruments traveled from India to Persia, then to Arabia and finally to North America. It then spread to Europe. These were instruments like rebab. <laughs> Rebab, 
Kazakh Kobus was dubbed the prototype of European stringed bowed instruments by scientists. Kobus, according to scholars, is the predecessor of the violin. As time passed, these instruments improved and a plethora of new ones appeared. It was also done in a unique manner. When playing, the violin was placed on the shoulder and was moved closer to the neck. Making kobus, according to some craftsmen, is far more difficult than making a violin. When orchestras first appeared, they decided to recreate the kobus to sound more like a violin. The strings were stretched. The first three strings were plucked on kobus. If you recall the traditional instruments, strings were originally made of goat intestine. However, it was discovered that such an instrument produces a low, heavy sound comparable to that of a dombra. High registers were required. The instrument was later drastically altered, producing this four-string primacobus, which is akin to a violin. When kobus is held horizontally, its shape resembles that of a swan. The swan is considered sacred by the Kazakhs. According to the great scientist and academician Alke Margolan, such links are not by chance and reflect the people's worldview, values and unique veneration for the sacred bird, which was the totem of nomadic tribes. Kobus is considered sacred because its structure is important. The instrument's head is shaped like a swan. Kazakhs have traditionally revered the swan as a sacred bird. They never hunted swans and ate no foul flesh. Take note of the spherical shape of the head. It appears to be a swan and a typical kobus. This portion resembles a bird's beak. Kobus looks like a flying swan when held in this position. Perhaps this is why many people revere kobus. The masters who make kobus are known to the performers. There are plenty of them. However, when I was in college, kobus was created by violin manufacturers. Consider Persian, Nipriahin, is the master who made my kobus. There are skilled artisans. If we're talking about structure, this is the ear. If the strings and kolkobus are made of horse hair, we have metal strings. The neck and stand are shown here. Here are some more customizing options. This is an average priced kolkobus. The number of people who want to play kobus is increasing. I am confident that we will achieve world-class status in this area in the future. Today, I also have my own students. They are eager to work and show an interest. I believe it also depends on the teacher. For example, I dabble with various styles, film their covers and make movies. People notice and desire to learn, mostly girls. So I teach them. There are also boys. After all, this instrument was traditionally played by men, although now there are more female players.
I rest when I play the kobus. When I'm fatigued, I worry, and when I'm sad, I go for a kobus. This music brings me comfort. Playing in nature is a wonderful delight. It's fantastic. It is, after all, in our blood. Our forefathers roamed the steppe expanses along with nature. Playing the dombra and other instruments, they were in harmonious communication with the enigmatic unknown to a side of the earth. Music fosters harmonic links across worlds and aids in the formation of new ideas and behaviors. For example, it can assist people in finding a way out of a difficult life scenario. I believe our ancestors' spirits guide us. Barsa, who have passed away, such as Ukhlas Baba, are no longer with us, but I'm confident that they continue to support us. They know who should play. How and what to play and which cue to use. Cue are not forgotten. On the contrary, we are fostering this tradition, with Qobus music becoming increasingly popular. I believe this cannot happen without the intervention of our ancestors' spirits. To play the Qobuz, one must have an insatiable passion and aspiration. He has a lot of work ahead of him. After all, as you know, success is made of 1% of talent and 99% of hard work. This is something I completely agree with. Qobuz is one of the more challenging instruments to master. Violin, for example, is played by squeezing the fingers together. We play with the base of the nail plates on the fingers. Learning this takes a lot of perseverance. A person should enjoy playing the kubus. Second, perfect pitch is essential. When a youngster comes to us for training, we first assess his pitch. It should be perfect. This is critical. Nowadays, kubus is very popular among foreigners who come to us to learn how to play it. They experienced firsthand how kubus restores their spirit. I have German and Austrian students. They are overjoyed to have learned to play this instrument. Even people in their 80s and 90s are eager to learn how to play Qobos, because Qobos provides spiritual nourishment. It's a soul healer. It's no surprise that it has medicinal effects. All of this demonstrates that Qobuz is our brand. Qobuz is a mystical instrument that can correctly express the sounds of nature, the howl of a wolf, the cry of a swan, the breath of the wind, the murmur of water, in a word, all the sounds that surround us. This is its strength and distinction. The sacred instrument which succeeded to pass the ideology of the ancient nomads to their successors is popular to this day. It traverses the world drawing people in with its wonderful sound, transporting consciousness to other levels, enveloping the soul and raising the spirit. It continues to heal our bodies, cleanse our hearts, enrich our inner world and bring harmony into our lives. Thank you.